Raina's apartment Saturday morning. Marconi is sitting in the dining room finishing off breakfast. Raina picks up the dishes and rinses them off in the sink before putting them into the dishwasher. Michael, there's a mysterious place called the Mima Mounds that I'd like to take you to today. Some say the mounds are ancient Indian burial grounds. You know, Raina, that sounds very interesting. So how far is it from here? It's only 20 miles from here. It's located in Little Rock, right off I-5 on Waddle Creek Road. Well, anytime you're ready, I'm ready to go whenever you are, Raina. Raina grabs her bag from the front door. Marconi and Raina exit the apartment. 30 minutes later, Mima Mounds, Little Rock, Washington. Marconi and Raina get out of the silver Toyota in the Natural Area Preserve parking lot. They walk through a wooded area before reaching the prairie mounds. Marconi can see large cedar trees with mounds at their bases. He sees a nearby building with an observation deck. There are prairie mounds surrounding an open field. Raina stops at a large cedar tree and places both of her hands on it. She stands there for a while, meditating in silence. Marconi continues walking and gravitates to a large mound that is buried under a large tree. Marconi now walks up the incline to the top of the sacred mound and he stands in front of the tree. After a few moments, he notices a red envelope on the ground. Marconi picks up the red Chinese envelope, opens the envelope, and pulls out three coins. Marconi studies the coins. Marconi then observes a black military helicopter overhead. He quickly puts the red envelope back into his pocket. Raina now observes the helicopter and walks over to where Marconi is standing. Michael, looks like we've got company. Yeah, it's Aegon and O'Rourke again. They're back. Rainer and Marconi hear shots being fired from a nearby firing range. It now begins to rain. Michael, it's starting to rain. Well, what do you want to do, Rainer? Well, let's make our way back to the car, Michael. That's a good idea. It looks like it could come down hard any moment. Rainer and Marconi look out over the prairie as they hurry back to the car in the Natural Area Preserve parking lot. Rainer and Marconi get back into her vehicle. Rainer starts the vehicle and proceeds to leave the Mima Mounds Preserve parking lot. Raina now turns left onto 128th Street Southwest and sees signs for the I-5 interstate. She then merges onto the interstate and heads north back towards Olympia. Michael, something's wrong with the brakes. Well, try tapping on the brakes, Raina. Raina taps on the brake pedal. Michael, the pedal went completely to the floor. You know, Raina, I can hear a grinding sound coming from the front wheels. Michael, I just had the car inspected a couple of months ago, and they told me the brakes were fine. Raina, get in the right lane and drive slowly, please. Okay, Michael. Raina checks her rearview mirror before changing lanes. You know, Raina, this car isn't safe. Is there a place we can take the car to to have it looked at? Yes, Michael. There's a place downtown called Les Schwab Automotive. Good. Let's go straight there. Raina now drives slowly on Interstate 5 heading towards Olympia. She exits on Capitol Way and heads down on a city street driving towards the automotive parking lot. Raina now pulls her car into the automotive parking lot and the car screeches to a halt inches from the main window of the Les Schwab Automotive store. A white male auto mechanic wearing a blue uniform comes running out of the Les Schwab Automotive building. Don't tell me! Let me guess! You're here because you need a new set of brakes. Raina and Marconi now step out of the car. Raina hands the auto mechanic her car keys. Raina's cell phone rings and she answers the call. After a couple of seconds, she hangs up the cell phone. Michael, that was Bobby McCoy. He asked if we were okay. He said that he needs to come over tonight. Raina, how did he know that we were in danger? Raina shrugs her shoulders and Marconi just stares.